So in a previous video on my channel, we created a Superbase Flutter Flow application which supported streaming and maintaining chat history as well so your users could resume that conversation. Please do check the link in the description for that particular video. This is kind of like a bit of a part two where we're gonna kind of take that application, but we're gonna kind of make some visual enhancements to it because if I'm honest with you, I don't really like the look and feel of the content that is coming back from the open AI platform. So we're gonna put some techniques in practice inside this particular video where we can make things look a little bit nicer. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Now, before we get started in this particular video, I just wanted to briefly mention about the Digital Pros at No Code Academy. If you're taking your first steps in Flutterflow or you're trying to learn more about the platform, then the Academy could be an ideal place for you. It's a great community, lots of written articles and video content in there as well. It's very close to my heart. It's where I spent a lot of my time. So it'd be great to see you within inside that community. The link is in the description to get started. And hopefully I'll see you soon. Let's get on with the video. In one of my previous videos, I showed you and walked you through this assistant chat application, which uh, stores your super basic history for your chat conversations. But there is a, a kind of a visual flaw in this particular application. And in this video, we're gonna walk through and try to resolve that. So let me just demonstrate what that is. If I go to start a brand new chat, and I'm just gonna say, you know, my computer is getting hot, something like that, and just hit the send option there. It's gonna go away, it's gonna, stream the result back to the user interface, but just have a look at it. It doesn't look particularly pretty. You can see here we've got these kind of star stars and star sort of against kind of some of the titles there are some of the bullets. Um, the, you know, the, the kind of the, the typeface is looking okay because that's kind of matching the text kind of widget that we're using, but how do we kind of tell uh, the open AI platform to return this back in a much more attractive looking format and how do we represent that with inside the UI. So in this video we're going to walk through that so let's now move into Flutterflow and let's walk through that process together. Okay, so here I am with the final project from the previous video. And of course, you ha if you haven't followed that particular video, then please do check the link in the description. But this is kind of like the final uh, sort of project that we had. Now, I'm going to approach this in two ways. I'm going to show you a simple approach, and then I'm going to show you a little bit more of a complex approach that provides you with a greater sort of flexibility when it comes to uh, styling the content that comes back from the open AI platform. So I'm on the chat page at the moment. You can see here, this is the AI chat text. Now this is the text widget that is currently taking receipt of the stream of the data that is coming back from the open AI platform. Now this again is just a text widget. It's got a little bit of basic styling on here just to kind of match pretty well match the content that is on the right hand side. This is the, the message that I would put in, the prompt that I would put in to then carry out that chat. Now what we could do is we could delete this out. So let's remove the AI chat. So I've got that completely disappeared. I'm going to go to the plus here. I'm going to do a search for markdown here and just select markdown. And you can see that I've now got that here. Now I'm just going to take off the constraints here to this particular widget. Let's just remove the height there like that. And the markdown widget you can see here is I've got some like dummy kind of content in here. So I'm just going to sort of grab that. And I'm just going to reference this by choosing data. And I'm going to go to the conversation item I'm going to go up here to then the get row field and I'm just as we did previously return back just the content in this particular widget just hit in fact I'm just going to put the text in there as well just put content in here so we've got something visual on the screen so there we go so now if I now quickly now go back to the test mode I'm going to kind of just refresh this here so I'm just going to stop it here I'm just going to run the test again so I'm going to pull down the package now of the markdown widget that we're using now within our project and then we'll head over to the the simulator and we'll give this application a test. Okay, so let's carry out the same test as we did before. So I'm gonna start a new chat and say my computer is getting hot like that. Just hit the send option here. And it's gonna do the same thing again. And you can see now that the format comes back and it's looking a little bit more attractive. You can see we're getting bold text now through the result that comes back from the OpenAI platform. So that's looking, uh, looking a lot nicer. Now, you could be quite happy with this. This could suit you in your style of application for a more simple approach, but there is one additional problem with this and if you look here the style is not particularly looking in keeping with the kind of the, the, the kind of the body text that I've 
got of my app, uh, my actual application itself. Now, the problem with the Markdown widget with inside Flutterflow is that you cannot customize any of the styling. And additionally, it's not inheriting any of the styling of my application. Now that is just a limitation in the way that the Markdown widget is currently working with inside of Flutterflow. Now it could be in the future, they could have resolved that, but for now you are a bit stuck with um, really the output and the style that you're looking on screen at the moment. So how do we solve that? Well, what we're gonna need to do is we are gonna have to enhance our Flutterflow application to use a custom widget. And we're gonna have to kind of use the Markdown widget with inside a custom widget. And then that will then open up an opportunity for us to start styling some of the specific kind of markdown tags that come back from the actual content. So we're gonna go and do that in a moment and then we're also gonna to have to ask the OpenAI platform, the Assistant AI in its instructions to kind of make sure it enforces the use of markdown content coming back from the OpenAI platform. But we'll do that in just a moment, but we'll go back into Flutterflow and we're gonna start setting up that custom widget. Okay, so back within Flutterflow, let's move to the left-hand side. Let's choose the custom code option. And you can see here that um, I need to add a brand new custom widget and I've got nothing in there at the moment. So just hit the add and go to widget. And I'm just gonna type in a name here. And this one's just gonna be called custom markdown like that. Now this custom markdown, we're gonna define some parameters here on the right-hand side. So we're gonna wanna pass in some string content to this markdown. So hit add parameters. Let's just call this input string for now. And we can keep this as uh, set in fact take nullable off because we're always going to pass in a value here. So the dependency is going to be really important. Now this is going to be the package, the Flutter Markdown package that we need to uh, kind of add in here. We want this to use this particular package independently because what we're going to do is we're going to remove the Markdown package as the widget within inside the widget tree that we've currently added just previously. So of course there's going to be no reference to that package so we're going to want to make sure that we include that package here. Okay, so here we are then on PubDev and I've just done a search for flutter underscore markdown here and this is the package we need. So all we need to do is just copy that here, move back over to Flutterflow itself and then we can just paste that dependency in there. That's all that we need to do. Now let's move over to the option up here for the add boilerplate code, select that, hit add. And we've now got the kind of the bare bones custom widget currently already created for us. But this is, we need more than this, this is not enough. We need to now start implementing the functionality for this markdown widget. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a reference to the Flutter Markdown package. So if I just go over here, you can see here that they're giving you the kind of the, the tip here that you need to use. You can just kind of either select that or you can hit the little copy here. Let's move back. Let's just go below here because we need to do everything where it says do not remove or modify the code above. So we can just paste that in here. So we've now got a reference to that. We can now start utilizing some of the functionality into this bit here. Now, of course, if you're not a coder, it doesn't really matter. Please just follow along with exactly what I'm doing here. And I'll give you some other little tips along the way as well on how you can extend the functionality of this markdown widget just a little bit further when it comes to actual styling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to paste some code in here. Um, of course this code is all available with inside the final project with inside the link in the description so please go and copy and paste that should make your life a little bit easier but I'm just going to paste some content in here and then you can then uh, I'll kind of walk you through how that kind of works. Okay so all code has been pasted in here and you can see now I've removed the container that was here so we're now returning back a markdown body widget itself. Now you can see here the first one is the data. This is the widget input string. So um, widget dot and then input string is referencing the text that we're going to be passing into this particular markdown. Then what I've got this here is I've got this option called a style sheet and then I'm kind of creating this markdown style sheet here. And what I'm doing here is I'm kind of overriding any of the standard styles that the markdown uh, kind of widget is providing here. So you can see I'm setting the, the P. So these are kind of like a equivalent to HTML tags if you are familiar with HTML, you'll know that P is a paragraph and um, typically that would be just sort of general text. And what you can see here is I'm kind of giving it the, uh, of the theme of the project, the body medium. Okay, and of course these are all available with inside your, your theme settings. So you can go and have a look at those um, with inside the actual kind of option up here. You've got the theme settings there. And you see here that the H3, which is a, a typical header, is a header three so It's not the biggest one, but it's one that kind of sits almost in the middle there, it's like a medium size header and you can see here that I'm setting that to the title small of my particular project. And of course you could have other ones on here as well. So 
I guess one of your questions might be is, well, how do I know all of these and where do they actually come from? Well, let's now head over back to the pub.dev. Let's delve a little bit deeper into the actual source code of the Markdown editor, which will give you a good reference point when you would like to maybe customize these a bit further or you need to support more types of kind of equivalent tags in your actual project. Let's head over there now and have a quick look. Okay, so here I am on pub.dev and let's click on this option here, repository GitHub. Now this is gonna take us off to the web page where the author has kind of got all of the source code to this particular Markdown widget. And you can see here that we don't really need to know too much about the detail here, of course, again, if you're not a coder, but let's go into then the lib, but this is kind of like the source code of the actual Markdown widget. I'm gonna go into source here. And I've got this option called style sheet. So just choose a style sheet. And you can see here that these are all of the kind of the, the P's and the H3's that you saw that I had in the style that I was just defining previously in the last segment. But if I scroll down here, you can see that these are all the ones that you can uh, kind of customize. Okay, so you can reference those with inside the source code itself. Um, and you can see here that these kind of all map on. So a typical kind of P tag within HTML is mapped onto P and LI is mapped onto P as well. Um, here's your H3, which is mapped onto h3 so you get the idea of what this is doing but the good thing is is if you just scroll down here to this particular section here you can kind of see that um, if you were using this um, by default this particular markdown widget you'll get an idea of kind of what it's currently uh, sort of mapping onto and what we're doing is, is we're kind of overriding that with our own kind of setup you can see here that we've got the h3 which is mapping onto a, a text theme of title so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of use these and we're going to style these up ourselves with inside our own product project but I just wanted to point that out that that's kind of where they're all listed just in case you'd like to get a better idea of which ones that you need to customize. So just for now then I'm quite happy with these particular styles of course we'll go and sort of customize these a little bit shortly but um, I'm quite happy with this so we can just save the widget up there and we can just kind of click the little compile option up there now that will kind of go away it will kind of do its thing it will take probably one or two minutes to compile this particular custom widget once that's been com compiled and you have the little tick the green tick up the top there that means that that custom widget is now available for us to now use with inside our actual main widget tree of our project. So we're just going to wait for that to finish and then we'll then move on to the next bit. Okay, so I'm all compiled. Let's move back over then to the widget tree and let's now start implementing that particular custom widget. So I'm just going to move down here. You can see here this is our markdown that we created earlier. So let's just uh, delete that. We don't want that anymore. So we've just got our container. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to add in our custom widget. Now, if I just hit the plus here, I go up to the little diamond. You can see here that we've got our custom widget here. Just select that. And that's now going to be added. There's a few little things that we need to do here. We need to tweak this. So we've inside the actual custom markdown sort of widget itself on the properties on the right hand side, we're just going to set the width and the height to be zero. And we're just going to take off this enforce width and height. That's going to be really important to us because we're going to kind of want the kind of the, the actual custom widget itself to be kind of fluid. We want it to kind of scale depending on the contents that's obviously been returned with inside it. So that's going to be important. Just want to make sure that our container has got no kind of fixed hit width. No, it hasn't. So that's all good for us. So what we now need to do is we just need to select the input string now so just press the option here and we can now go to our conversation item go up to here and say get row, row field choose then the content that's going to come back from our database and I'm just going to put in the term content here as well and hit confirm now that is all that we need to do we should now just be able to quickly fire this back up into the test mode so I'm just going to go up here I'm just going to refresh my application it may come up with an error you may need to stop it and start it again but um just go with that that should refresh your application application and let's now head back over to the simulator to see what that looks like. Okay, so just as we did before, then let's start a brand new chat. Let's type in the same question that I did before. My computer is getting hot like that. Hit the send option and away it goes. Workflow will be invoked. You can see here that it's now streaming down. And what's really nice now is you can see that our style of our typeface is now much, much more in keeping with our project. But we don't need to stop there. We can customize it a little bit more. And we're also going to pop over to the OpenAI platform. We're going to make a couple of adjustments on our assistant as well to see if it can improve it further. So let's go and do the Flutterflow change now. 
Okay, just to test some additional styling then, let's say for example on the right hand side of inside my content here, I wanna move down here and I wanna set my line height to be 1.4. I just wanna add a little bit of spacing between, between each line of my paragraph text. Well, how do you do the equivalence of that with inside our custom code? So now with that set, I'm just gonna move over to our custom code on the left hand side. And you see here, this is the paragraph text. This is the style that I would like to kind of override with those values. So I'm just gonna do a full stop here. I'm gonna say a copy with like that. I'm gonna do a opening and closing parentheses or brackets and then just go down like that and I'm just going to basically set the height there to be 1.4 itself with a little comma there so that's all that I need to do so I can just kind of save this I'm going to compile the actual code itself I'm going to let it do its thing and we can quickly go and test that then back inside the simulator okay so back within our test app then this is our previous conversations let's hit on this little new chat here and you can see in this example here, you can see the spacing is a little bit more spaced out there so you can see how you can kind of gradually kind of customize the kind of the look and feel now just incidentally let me just talk a little bit about the other sort of textile options that are available though you could use the benefit of chat gpt hatchy in general here to kind of uh, help you with your list of uh, sort of textiles that you can choose here i've just gone straight into chat gpt here and i said tell me about all the textiles which can be set in flutter and you can see here that if you look down this list here these are kind of all the different ones that you can kind of set here or give you a little bit more of a hint here and here's the height is the one that we've selected obviously we did 1.4 but um yeah you've got different sort of options available in here so you can kind of copy this and use chat gpt to help you if you are not a coder now let's now move over to the open ai platform let's update our instructions and hopefully that might allow us to get a little bit more uh, even more better visuals from the conversation that we've got coming back from the open ai platform so here i am on the open ai platform and i'm within my particular assistant here you can see that it's an IT support technician that's why we're kind of getting more the IT related stuff but here is the instruction um, I'm gonna extend this instruction a little bit I'm gonna be very explicit about saying please provide all of the responses in a markdown format so let's just put that tech copy in there now so I just quite simply said there, you must strictly provide all responses in a markdown format to enhance the visual appeal of the output, something like that. And then I, that should just work for us now if we move back over to the test mode. So let's try doing the test again. Let's see if we see any difference at all. Okay, let's start a brand new chat here. Let me say, please tell me more about a GPU, something like that. Hit send. Let's see what kind of output that we get. There we go, so we've got a title name, see there, it says, what is a GPU? That looks pretty nice. We've got some titles here, which is looking pretty good. I and mean, of course we can customize the look of those titles if we wanted to. So that gives you a good flavor there about being a little bit more kind of uh, explicit with uh, the OpenAI platform to kind of really tailor kind of the output that comes back. Let me quickly show you what that looks like in Superbase so you get an idea of what the kind of markup looks like. And then hopefully you can then start looking at how you can customize the output in your own projects to match the kind of response that you got coming back from chat uh, GPT or the OpenAI platform. Okay, so here we are then within the conversation table with inside Superbase. You can see that here, this is the last one that we did in the previous example. Let's have a little look here to see what we've kind of got. So this one should give you a good clue here to kind of the, the markdown markup that we've kind of got this being applied to our content. And then of course you can then use that as a good reference point to work out kind of what customizations that you need to make inside your custom code. You can see you've got your, your kind of your H3, your header three there, and you kind of got your star stars that represents bold. So you get the idea, you kind of look through here and you kind of hopefully give you a little bit more of a clue to kind of what is being output just so you can kind of tailor that as you like and of course you can still use the uh, the power of chat gpt itself to kind of assist you along the way here i said please tell me what the equivalent markdown styles are on html and you can see here that this is the star stars are representing bold and you can see if i just scroll down here then we've got then the uh, the, the 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 asterisks that build up for your different headers so if you see all of that with inside your markdown that's coming back from the assistant ai you can then make those equivalent customizations with inside the custom code itself. So hopefully it gives you all of the tools that you need with inside this particular video to kind of get marked down all nicely customized with inside your own application. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Please do check out the Digital Pros and No Code Academy. The link is in the description if you'd like to kind of build your knowledge in Flutterflow and of course surrounding technologies. We're there to help. It's a lovely community and it'd be great to see you there. So until the next video, I'll see you soon.